Wait on the Lord, be strong and of good courage. Wait on the Lord, I say on the Lord. Wait, wait on the Lord, be strong and of good courage. Wait on the Lord, I say on the Lord. Wait, wait on the Lord, be strong and of good courage. Wait on the Lord, I say on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be strong. The Almighty God sent us a text message. The text message is found in Mark chapter 2, beginning with verse number 1. Let's read the text message that God has sent to us. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house and straightway many gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them and they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Then drop down to verse number 11. I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way unto thine house. We have several ways in which we enter our homes. Most of the time, uh, most of us would go through the front door. Some would go through the garage door. And then sometimes we have to go through the back door. And then if you ever lose your key, sometimes you would have to go through the window. But have you ever heard of someone going through the roof? That's our message for today. Going through the roof. This phrase, going through the roof, has significance. For it signifies doing something extraordinary. Stepping out of the box, doing something marvelous and doing something different, going through the roof. We might say it like this. Her parents were proud of her because her grades were through the roof. We might even say, honey, you, you, that cake that you bake was through the roof. Oh, Brother Gray, that sermon that you preach was through the roof. Thank you. And that's why we use the phrase through the roof, through the roof. And yes, the Bible says that four men brought their friend to Jesus. They came to this place where Jesus was preaching in a house in Capernaum. And when they came to the house, the Bible says that uh, there were a crowd there and, and they couldn't get in the house for the crowd. And the 
Bible says they went up on the roof. Evidently there were stairwells or stair or stairway going up on the roof. This is way the way the Palestinian house were made. They went up on the roof and they tore up the roof and let the sick man down in front of Jesus where Jesus was preaching. They went through the roof. Oh, the house was packed. People heard about the fame of Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, the people were crowded. They heard about his miracles. They heard about him feeding 5,000 with a few loaves and a few fish. Oh, they heard about him healing a blind man with some saliva. Oh, people were wanting to see Jesus. They even heard about one day that, that Jesus raised a dead man who had been dead for four days. And Jesus raised him from the grave. And people heard about this. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds were there. And they were there just to see Jesus. And, and Jesus was preaching in this house that day. And the Bible says that the crowds were there. There was not even room at the door because Jesus was there. The house was packed. That brings me to another point, my friends. Oh, I wish the house of God was packed today. I know we're living in a pandemic, but when this pandemic is over, oh, I wish the house of God was packed. I wish people would come to the house of God, yes, the schoolhouse is packed and the courthouse is packed and the jailhouse is packed and, and even the crack house is packed. But oh, I wish that the house of God was packed today. I see several things in the text. Number one, going through the roof. That's innovation. Innovation. These men did something innovative. They did something different. They did something marvelous. They, they stepped out of the box. They did something very miraculous. They stepped out of the box. And the Bible says that they carried their friend upon the roof. Put a pin right here. Put a pin right here. My friend, my friend, one of these days, someone will have to carry you. You better be careful the way you treat people because someday someone will have to carry you. They will have to carry you emotionally. They will have to carry you physically. They will have to carry you financially. You better be careful. People will have to carry you one day. Someone is going to have to carry you one day. This is what Jesus said to Peter one day in St. John chapter 21. Jesus said to Peter chapter 21 and verse number 18. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, when you were young, you went where you wanted to go and you dressed yourself. But oh, Peter, when you get old and when you get feeble, someone is going to have to carry you. Someone is going to have to dress you, Peter. I tell you, you better be careful. You better be careful how you treat people. Someone will have to carry you one day. And so it was. They carried this man, this their friend. Yes, in this pandemic that we're in today. My friends, we have to do something innovative. We can't do the same thing we've been doing. We, we got to do something innovative. We got to step out of the box. Our worship has to be innovative. We got to do something different. Oh, yes, and these men, they were innovative. They stepped out of the box and they did something innovative. And I want to say, my friends, even in the church, Oh, we got to do something innovative in the church when, when unconventional uh, methods 
uh, conventional methods do not work, we got to try some unconventional methods. Oh, no, don't you change the message. Don't you change the message. Change the method. Change the method. Don't change the message, but change the method. And this is what these men did. They changed their method of what they did. And yes, something else I see in this text. I see cooperation. Innovation, cooperation. Going through the roof, you have to be innovative. And there has to be some cooperation. I want you to see the cooperation of these four men bringing their friend to Jesus. Oh, they had to cooperate. They had a makeshift gurney. And each one of them had a corner. Each one of them cooperated together. Look at them as they are taking the man upon the roof. Look at them as they are tearing the roof open. Look at them as they are lowering the man down before Jesus. Oh, there was cooperation there. And oh, my friends. I wish there were more cooperation in the church. Amen. I wish there were more cooperation among brothers and sisters in the church. I wish there were more cooperation between the members and the leaders of us. Oh, we need cooperation. I tell you something else. We need cooperation in the home. Husbands and wives need to learn how to work together. Parents need to know, learn how to work with their children and children need to learn how to cooperate with their parents. We need cooperation if the church is going to grow, if the home is going to grow. We need cooperation. And this is what these men had. And the reason they were successful was because of their cooperation. They cooperated. Oh, they cooperated. And they Brought this man to Jesus. I heard of a story of a, a two older women in a convalescent home. They were uh, pianists. They were accomplished pianists, but both of them had strokes. One was paralyzed on one side. The other was paralyzed on the other side. And the director got them together one day and sat them down at the piano. One on the right hand, the other on the left hand. And he challenged them to make music together. And oh, what a beautiful piece they came up. Oh, what beautiful harmony. One was on the right. They used the right hand. The other used the left hand. And they played a melody, a harmony. I tell you, my friend, when, 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 when you work together, when there is cooperation, there is harmony, there is peace, there is beauty. That's what the Bible says. In Psalm chapter 133 and verse number one, the Bible says, this, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, how good. And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, it's good. It's productive. Oh, how much we can do when there is cooperation. Oh, we can turn the world upside down if there is cooperation. It's good. It's pleasant. It's beautiful. Oh, when brethren dwell together in unity, when brethren work together in unity, there is beauty, there is productivity. But I want you to notice something else. There is a complication. Yes, there is innovation. Yes, there is cooperation. But yes, there is a complication. You see, when these men got to the house, there were the crowds. That impeded them. The Bible says and, and Mark says that, that there, there were so many people in the house that they were, they were all at the door. And these men could not get in the house because there were crowds at the door. There was a complication. Crowds impeded them. 
That reminds me of another little man called Zacchaeus. Do you remember him? Oh, the Bible said that Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector. And oh, one day Jesus came to his hometown. The Bible says he came to Jericho. And the Bible said that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. But the Bible said, but the press kept him from seeing Jesus. The crowds were everywhere trying to see Jesus. And Zacchaeus was a short man. He was short, but he was smart. You know what Zacchaeus did? The Bible says Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowds, climbed up into a sycamore tree, and there he met Jesus. He saw Jesus. Oh, there was a message here. Oh, there was a message for our young people here. As long as you're running behind the crowds, you can't see Jesus. As long as you're running with the crowds, you can't see Jesus. Oh, you got to run ahead of the crowds in, in order to see Jesus. And this is what Zacchaeus did. He ran ahead of the crowds to see Jesus. Can I knock on your door today? Can I knock on your door? I tell you, when you do something marvelous and when you go through the roof, there will be complications. I tell you, when, when you do something marvelous, when you go through the roof, there will always be complications. In the church, when you get ready to build a program, there will be complications. Everything is not going to be easy. There will be complications. And so it was with these men, when they came to the house, the door was blocked. There was complications. I see something else in the text. Can you see it? There is dedication. Going through the roof means dedication. I want you to see the dedication of these men bringing their friend to Jesus. First, they had to go and get the man. He was paralyzed. And then they have to find or either make a makeshift gurney and they put him on the gurney. I don't know how far it was from his house to where Jesus was, but they carried him all of the way. They carried him all of the way. And when they got there, the door was blocked. I tell you, the Bible says they went up on the roof. Can you see the dedication? Can you see how dedicated they were in bringing their friend to Jesus? Tore up the roof. That's dedication. Let him down inside the house before Jesus. That's dedication. Can you see the dedication that these men had in bringing their friend to Jesus? My friends, when you are doing something from the law for the Lord, the Lord demands dedication. I want to say it again and I want to say it loud and clear. Whenever you do something for Jesus, whenever you do something for the Lord, the Lord demands dedication. If you don't believe me, listen to this. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Did you hear that? Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. If you're going to sing a song, song leader, sing like you're singing to Jesus. Preacher, if you're going to preach, preach like you're preaching to Jesus. And yes, and yes, teacher, if you're going to teach, teach like it's Jesus in the audience. And van driver, if you are going to drive the van, drive it like Jesus is on board. Whatever you do, you do it heartily. You do it with all your might. This is what the Bible says also. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse number 10. Whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it with all of thy might. There is no work, there is no device, there is no knowledge, and there is no wisdom in the grave where you're going. Did you hear that? Whatever you got to do, you better do it with all your might. You better do it now because in the grave you cannot work. Whatever you got to do, do it now. Do it now. Whatever your hand find to do, do it right now. Then there was something else in the text. 
You want to go through the roof? You got to have faith. I said you got to have faith. The Bible says that when they let their friend down before Jesus, look at Jesus now preaching in the house. Jesus looks up and this man is coming through the roof on a makeshift pallet. And the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, that's when Jesus healed the man. I said, when Jesus saw their faith, that's when Jesus healed the man. Oh, can Jesus see your faith? Show me your faith. Show me your faith. Oh, I can hear your faith. I can hear your faith. But Jesus, the Lord, wants you to show him your faith. Show me your faith. Show me your faith on Sunday morning. Show me your faith when the collection tray is passed. Show me your faith when they're, they're the poor and they're the needy. Show me your faith. The Bible says this. James chapter 2 and verse number 18. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show you my faith by my works. That's how you show your faith. You show your faith by your works. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Jesus wants to see your faith. Put your faith where your mouth is. Jesus wants to see your faith. Put your faith where your mouth is. There is an evangelistic message here. As we close, yes, there is an evangelistic message here. There is someone that you need to bring to Jesus. Listen, my friends. There is someone, there is someone that you need to bring to Jesus. Just like these four men brought their friend to Jesus. There is someone, there is someone that you need to bring to Jesus. Maybe there's a friend. You need to bring to Jesus. Maybe there's a husband or a wife you need to bring to Jesus. Maybe there's a child that you need to bring to Jesus. There is someone that you need to bring to Jesus. Would you bring them to Jesus today? Oh, they need to see Jesus. Oh, Jesus can do something that the world can't do. Jesus can do something that the doctors can do. Jesus can do something that the counselors can do. Oh, you need to bring them to Jesus. Bring them to Jesus today. Go through the roof. Go through the roof. Do something extraordinary. Step out of the block and bring them to Jesus. Oh, the world needs to see Jesus today. Your family need to see Jesus. Your friends need to see Jesus. And perhaps your husband or wife need to see Jesus. Bring them to Jesus today. Yes, there was another woman. You remember they brought her to Jesus. The Bible says she was caught in adultery. She was caught in adultery. Caught, the Bible says, in the very act. And they brought her to Jesus. Oh, they brought her to Jesus, and Jesus had mercy on her, and Jesus had love and mercy on her. Oh, my friend, my friend, my friend, if I'm ever caught in adultery, I said, if I'm ever caught in adultery, if I'm ever caught in adultery, bring me to Jesus. Don't bring me before the church, bring me to Jesus. Don't bring me before my friends, bring me to Jesus. And don't bring me before Sister Gray, she might kill me. Bring me to Jesus. Bring me to Jesus. Jesus has mercy. Jesus has love. Jesus will forgive me. Bring me to Jesus. That brings us to the communion today. Oh, Jesus. Jesus went through the roof. He did something extraordinary. He died for you and me. He went through the roof. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ through the communion. We bring this communion to you. 
Right now, let us pray for the bread and for the fruit of the vine. Oh, Jesus, we thank you today for dying for our sins. We thank you, oh, Jesus, for going through the roof, for laying down your life that we might be saved. Thank you, oh, Lord, for these emblems, for this bread, which represents your body broken for our sins and this cup. Thank you for the fruit of the vine, which represents your blood shed on Calvary. Oh God, as we are praying today, we always like to thank all of those who give to this particular ministry. Yes, we're doing some things. We're going through the roof, using your funds to go through the roof, to feed the poor, to feed the hungry, to help the poor. Thank you for all of those who give to this ministry. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me, Jesus says. This is my blood shed for you. This do in remembrance of me. Amen and amen. Against me, but God will stand so true.